Hello and welcome to another fireside chat. It is great to have everybody here. Today is January the 26th and we are talking about Bell Let's Talk Day. Um, it is a, a time honored tradition in Canada um, that this is the time of the year and we talk about the importance of reaching out and talking to others. Um, there is a lot going on in our world right now and I think it's so easy to sort of pull back and get isolated, uh, but we forget about the resources that are out there and the opportunity for us to talk to others and invest. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us. I have a number of guests here today, and they will be talking about different resources that are available through the PMFRC um, and in the community as well. So if you did not catch the name of an organization or a service, if you did not catch someone's name or email, please don't worry. We're going to put all of that in the comment section underneath once this chat is done, so it'll be easier for you to find afterwards. I'm just going to do a quick roundtable and let folks introduce themselves. Chris Quigley, would you like to say hello? Sure. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's uh, Chris Quigley, the Family Transition Advisor with Transition Petawawa, and very familiar with the um, mental health team and all of the folks around the table. Looking forward to having a little chat about uh, Bell Let's Talk. Thank you, Nancy. Hello, everyone. I'm Nancy Sinclair. I am a mental health um, social worker from the Base Mental Health, and I'm also part of a family violence advisory team with lots of the folks that are here today. Kevin. Hi, I'm the acting health promotion manager here uh, on Base with Strength in the Forces, and my role every year typically is to head up the, the Bell Let's Talk activities here at the Garrison. And last but not least, Claudia, everybody knows you, but let's go ahead and introduce you anyway. So I'm uh, the executive director at the PMFRC, and I'm really happy that we are able to actually showcase Bell Let's Talk Day with uh, all of these great Garrison community resources that we're going to talk about today. So looking forward to the chat. So if you have been on social media at all today, um, there is no secret today is Bell Let's Talk Day. Um, you're going to see it in your feed. You're going to see it in profile pictures. You're going to see it in videos that are out there encouraging people to reach out to talk. And I, the hashtag that I keep saying is that hashtag keep talking. Chris, there, talking's a hurdle right now. There's a lot of people that are working from home. They are staying at home. They may be doing homeschooling. The amount of people that they're actually talking to, that circle's getting really small. Um, I think people are going a little bit stir crazy. Can you talk about the importance of reaching out and talking? And also how to know that the talking that you're doing is benefiting you and not maybe making your, your own well-being and your mental health a little bit worse? Yes, Julie, thank you for highlighting the fact that folks are in ho at home listening to the news and teaching their children and doing all of those sorts of things. So they're talking, but we want to make sure it's hashtag keep talking in a positive way. There's so much news out there that's negative and this isn't going to end and the pandemic is this and things are not great. But sometimes we'll get caught up in all of that uh, negativity and then folks start to think, you know, well, it will this end? What's going to happen? And so, if we if we continue on a positive, um, keep talking mode and open up our communication to share with uh, folks in our circle that are like minded and are able to understand where we're coming from, that communication can really do us a world of good. And as Bell Let's Talk uh, is uh, sharing throughout today, it's important to find your person to talk to. So we don't want to talk to the negative Nellies or the down, Debbie Downers because you know what's going to happen. We're going to walk away with, oh, woe is me, and we're all going to have Eeyore syndrome. What we really want to do is make sure that we find the, the positive person. And even if it's raining, let's find some positivity about what, you know, what that rain's going to, uh, what, what that rain's going to do. Because if we don't, we're going to build our anxieties, we're going to uh, build our worries. And unfortunately, we stop talking. And when we stop talking, then we get into other issues and concerns with our mental health. And we want to be able to push that out and uh, be a, as positive as we can in our communications. It's okay not to have a bad day. What's not okay is if you uh, take your bags and unpack and stay there. And so if you find somebody to have a good conversation with, and it doesn't have to be about the pandemic, maybe it's about getting your seeds planted for the spring, you know, because that, although it's cold, it is around uh, the corner. So the more positive you are, uh, the more upbeat you keep yourself in your communication. And um, it is a known fact 
that if you go around your house humming and singing, you will have a whole lot of a better mood uh, by the time you finish a song. And that can even be a happy birthday or Mr. Golden Sun, whatever comes to mind. But if you continue with the positivity and not let your, uh, your self-talk go to the negative side, you'll find that you can uplift yourself. But if you can't uplift yourself, it's important to find um, folks that you can uh, confident, confidently have a conversation with and share how you're feeling for sure. And when you're by yourself and you haven't been able to talk face to face with somebody, sometimes it gets a little bit harder to do the longer you're at home. And talking on Zoom isn't the same as talking one on one. Um, and some people are more, are much more comfortable texting somebody. So the idea of actually calling and talking to them, it seems a little bit overwhelming, but sometimes you need to sort of make that step and you're going to remember how much you enjoy talking to people. Um, Nancy, talking is great, and it's always great to reach out to friends and to family to talk through your problems, but sometimes um, people get to a point when they need more, um, when fans, friends and family are great, but they need more support, um, and maybe they need to be able to sit down and talk to somebody who has a little bit more background and who can give them more solid advice. What are the signs and symptoms that we should be looking for in our family and maybe with ourselves? that maybe it's time to reach out and see if there's a mental health professional that might be able to give us a little bit more guidance and help us get back on the path where we want to be. Excellent question. So, you know, listening to Chris talk and thinking about all of this idea of reaching out and connecting with the people in our community, you know, like our people, we all, I mean, pandemic is a great example of this, but even if we weren't in this pandemic, like life is hard. Humaning is really difficult work. And we are all going to face stressors that that can be a breakup, that can be step at work, that can be a death, that can be like a random car accident, it can be so many things. And of course, we are going to have a hard time with that. That's part of the human is experience is that when we face something, we kind of have this peak in terms of symptoms, anxiety or low mood and stuff like that. And in an ideal world, then that resolves. And so that's when we talk to our friends and our family. And when we talk to people we know, we're looking for validation and support, right? I don't, we don't often go to our friends to have our friend be like, eh, I don't think that's a big deal. Get over it. We're looking for someone to say, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened to you. That's, that's an important piece of processing. However, if we are always talking about that thing, and we are always hearing, oh my gosh, that's so horrible. I can't believe that happened to you. That validation becomes a thing that just really adds gasoline to the fire. It helps keep us stuck. So for me, stuckness is when we want to start looking for like, who else could I talk about this with in order to get unstuck? So then the question is like, well, what does stuck look like, right? And it's going to look like a million things for a million different people. But some of the things that I think about, um, is it a thing that you keep talking about? Like, have you revisited this story five, 10 times? Every time you see your friends, are you saying again, like how horrible your boss is and the pandemic and the WhatsApp and the cheating and the whatever? Like if it's over and over again, then maybe you're stuck. Um, other things that we look for is like, is it impacting my life? And so again, if you have a crisis and then two or three days, you like don't feel yourself and your appetite is low or you're having a hard time sleeping, I'm going to say you're humaning. That's just, that's part of processing hard moments in our lives. However, if it's been several weeks and it's, you know, you're still calling in sick or you're not sleeping well, or you're only sleeping or you're Netflixing and video gaming or whatever your vice is, right? If that is a thing that you find yourself doing more and more and more, then those are other signs that you're stuck. So we look at sleep, we look at appetite, we look at getting out. And I, I know, I know it's hard and it's so easy to be like, A, it's cold. It is cold. B, We're in Petawawa and it is right. very, very cold this month. It's cold. So it's cold and I'm not allowed to go anywhere anyways. Plus, even if I did, it's not really safe because COVID. So now I've just excused myself from all reasons to get up, get dressed and be around people. We are biologically programmed to connect. We heal in connection. Very rarely do we heal in isolation. So when I'm not doing those things, when I'm not reaching out, when I'm not, honestly, like the basics, like when I'm not like bathing and brushing my teeth, all of those things are signs that I'm getting stuck. Concentration is can be impacted. Um, motivation to do my hobbies, 
I'm trying to think of all the different things, you know, just not even feeling right in my body, feeling all of our emotions are, you know, neurobiological events, right? So what does it feel like to be in this skin? Do I feel angsty all the time? Or do I have just like that pressure on my chest? Like I could maybe, I feel like my heart is out there and someone is just continu continually stomping on it. So for me, I look at time and then I look at like, what are some of my signs of stuckness? So I could ramble about these things all day. So I'm going to stop. Hopefully that was clear as mud. <laughs> I'm going to ask you another question. Um, so if I have a friend that's calling me and I'm hearing from her all the time, and we are talking about the same thing over and over again, is there a, a kind way to say, you know what, I really think that you're stuck and you, you need to get out of this. So what's a kind way to sort of make that suggestion without shutting them down and say, you know what, I don't want to talk about this anymore, but also saying, I care enough about you that I really want to see you get unstuck. It's so funny because to me, any way that we raise that top, well, maybe not any way, but most ways that we raise that topic, that is kind, right? Like it's so loving if we can tell, if we have the hard conversations with the people we care about. Saying things like, you know, this happened a while ago and I like, I want to be here for you. I don't mind talking about this, but I don't know how to help you. I feel like, you know, I'm not sure if you're moving forward in this anymore. And I, you know, especially because they're like, I know someone who went to base mental health or called the MFRC or used SIFMAP, right? Like that's for families as well. Um, locally, we have things like the Robbie Dean Center. There's um, free CBT uh, through online. CBT Beacon is one and CBT Ability. I'll have like, we'll have to Google it to get the exact name. There's so many resources that we can go to that we can get unstuck with. And everybody knows someone who has done some of it. So, so you're going to put all of those things in the chat. Nancy, when we're done, we'll Google that and we'll make sure that that, uh, that is available. Cause I think those are good resources. And if we could point somebody in the right direction, not to say you should talk to somebody, but you know, maybe here's the IG I have who, um, yeah, yeah. that's going to help. And most people, I feel like everybody, if they find the right person to talk to, it's such a relief. And clinicians aren't there to say like, get over it or you did this wrong. It's to understand like, how do you fit into the system, right? Like, how are you reacting to the hard things that are happening in your life? And is there a way that we can change how you're responding to that so that you can better cope with it? We can't erase the hard parts, right? Like life's going to keep happening. So how do I function? How do I show up? in the presence of all of that hard stuff. And I think that as friends and family members, when we bring that up with people who are worried about, as long as we do that in a gentle way, to me, that already is an act of kindness. I'm worried about you. I don't know how else to support you. Would you be willing to call this number with me? Do you want me to like go into that appointment? I'll sit in the waiting room if I'm not allowed because it's COVID, I'll wait in the car. I'll sit in, in minus 30, I will wait in the car. That's how much I love you. But I don't know how to help you get through this part. Thank you, Nancy. Um, picking up on that, um, we're talking about different resources that are available in the community. Claudia, can you talk about some of the resources that are available to military families locally or maybe even nationally? Sure, well, as MFRCs, <clears throat> sorry, we take a really family-centered approach. And so when families are struggling with mental health issues, there could be a lot of factors that impact that their health and well-being. So depending on what families are struggling with, there's really a, a diverse number of programs that are offered, whether you're here in Petawawa or if you're listening um, to this at another base, we're all pretty much similar in what's being offered. And fundamentally, we're here to support the families. So, you know, if you're dealing with a deployment and there's added stress, check out the deployment team. If you're medically releasing um, veteran family, then there's the VFP uh, coordinator there to help you. So within your MFRCs, whether in Petawawa or at any other base, check out the CAF Connection website and see what those resources are there. We know that MFRCs can't provide every level of service that a family needs, but we do have a great collaboration with our community and base partners. And as we often say, you guys hear me say this all the time, no door is the wrong door. We will facilitate a warm handover with families. So those resources that you need or are looking for we will help you connect with them. We all have the common goal and that's to support our clients and the military community. So sustaining all of these various relationships and partnerships really helps us explore new ways of doing that. So there's several options for families who are looking for additional mental health supports and I'm gonna list them and it's gonna 
you know, it, it could be a lot, but Julie's going to make sure that um, she puts them in the chat. And it's not the first time that we've talked about these, and it's not an exhaustive list. We'll add Nancy's um, recommendations as well, and definitely check out your own local MFRC if there's other local resources there for you. So first, as Nancy said, we have uh, CIFMAP, or the Canadian Forces Members Assistance Program. It's a 24-hour, 1-800 bilingual telephone service available 365 days a year for all Reg Force members and their immediate families, spouse, partner, dependent children. You can access professional counselor by phone at any time, and they'll arrange an appointment within 48 hours. Short-term, long-term counseling are options, and they're free. So uh, veteran families also should take advantage of that. There is the family information line where military family services counselors provide supportive counseling seven days a week, 24 hours a day, also bilingual services. So you can call, connect to a friendly, experienced professional, well-versed on the CAP communities and the services, also a confidential service. There's a crisis text line for kids. Canadian Forces Morale and Welfare Services has partnered with the Kids Health Phone True Patriot Love Foundation and Lockheed Martin Canada to launch a crisis texting service for kids from military families who are living in Canada. Children, youth, and young adults from military families can access free mental health and well being support by texting keyword CAF Kids at 68686 <laughs> for service in English. The crisis text line powered by Kids Help Phone is confidential and available day or night. There's LifeSpeak videos. DD has partnered with Health Canada Employee Assistance Services to provide the defense team and their family members with access to this mental health and well being resource. LifeSpeak is an online health and wellness platform that includes videos, podcasts, action plans, ask, ask the expert sessions on many subjects that will provide you with insights to help you manage mental health. We've spoken before about the Strongest Families Institute. We actually have a fireside chat on that. And this service is available for children or youth between the ages of three to 17 who experience behavior issues or anxiety. It's also a nonprofit or a corporation providing evidence-based services to children and families seeking help for mental health and other issues impacting their well-being. Uh, they provide care to families by teaching skills through their unique distance coaching. And finally, there's also OSIS, Operational Stress Injury Social Support, and they provide a national peer support network for the CAF members, veterans, and their families experience an operational stress injury. The OSIS network is coordinated by screen trained peers who bring firsthand experience and practical knowledge of what it's like to struggle with an OSI. So this is not, like I said, uh, an exhausted list. There's so many more out there, but these are a lot of core ones that you can pretty much access uh, from a national level and definitely check out your local MFRC, what's, your, what's available uh, in your local area. Thank you, Claudia. Um, <clears throat> Those are the ones that are sort of more associated with military and, uh, and MFS. Um, Chris, what about local organizations? Uh, if, for people who are living in the Renfrew County area, different organizations that are available that maybe aren't um, associated with the CAF? Yeah, so uh, kind of uh, uh, piggybacking on what Nancy shared, uh, the Robbie Dean Center is uh, there. Uh, there's also Burnett McCann House. Uh, the Women's Sexual Assault Center. And if you're looking for a place to have a good conversation, perhaps go and hang out at the uh, grind for a little while and do some um, conver conversing uh, with folks there. There's always an interesting story to be told uh, there for sure. And um, there, there are psychological services in uh, Pembroke as well, if that's something that's uh, required. So I guess all that to say, um, Julie, that if you are in need of a service and you choose not to come to uh, the MFRC, just reach out. As Claudia said, no door is the wrong door. So if you want to go civilian side and you're looking for something specific that I haven't mentioned here, uh, let us know and we'll do the fine tuning and screening for you to get what it is that you're looking for. Thanks, but Sarah. I also, if you're looking at one of the uh, PMFRC counselors, reach out to the family advocacy coordinator because she would be the first step in connecting you with the mental health support, specifically with the PMFRC. Perfect. 
Bell Let's Talk Day. It's a it's a big thing at the garrison. And if you're following PSP and health promotion on Facebook, you're seeing different events and different things that are happening. Um, Kevin, do you want to just give us a little bit of a primer on what people uh, can take advantage of today or maybe in the coming days um, associated with the Bell Let's Talk campaign? Yeah, definitely. So this is the 12th annual Bell Let's Talk. And it's actually hard to believe that we've been doing this for 12 years. And it is the world's biggest conversation on mental health, which is fantastic. So again, the theme this year is supporting ourselves and each other. So we've really been pushing that theme. With the dollars that Bell uh, gives, uh, they're donating five cents for every call, text, tweet, social media view, use of their Facebook frame or Snapchat lens. So what we've been doing is directing people to those social media platforms so we can drive up those dollars. Uh, probably more importantly, we're, we're really encouraging people to talk, to listen, and to seek the help that they need. So one of the things that, that we've done at the unit level, we've provided the units with lots of resources so that they can actually uh, have conversations about mental health. So it's really a good opportunity for, for people from, from private to um, CO, I guess, um, about what's going on in their lives and, and some of the issues. And we, we're really encouraging people to, to open up. So trusting that that's going to be a successful event. This morning, we handed out lots of uh, swag to the military, military members. So it wouldn't be Bell Let's Talk if I didn't have my two. So we were, we've been handing out hats. Very fetching. <laughs> New this year, and you guys have to get one of these, is the mask. Oh, that is so in, new. In COVID style. Here we go. We got the mask. And we also have, uh, we've got gratitude journals, which is, is kind of a neat touch. We've got pens. We've got post-its. We've got lots of stuff. <clears throat> so we've asked people to tell us how they've looked after themselves in the last year, how they've supported others in the last year. And... We're going to continue to do that today. If so, so if people want to send in their responses to Health Promotion Petawawa at cfmws.com, they're bound to get a fantastic Bell Let's Talk prize. So I encourage everybody to do that. Um, I guess one of the other things uh, <clears throat> that's coming up, we're anticipating that this is gonna to come to an end. We're, we've kind of been on hold for the last few weeks here, but our, our course is gonna are gonna be starting again in February and people can check the, the CAF Connection Petawawa. Uh, we're an up-to-date schedule, but we've got some fantastic courses that we offer. So Mental Fitness and Suicide Awareness is a course I think everybody should take uh, for yourself and for others. If, if anybody's, I know I'm dealing with lots of professionals here, but if anybody's ever had the opportunity to help someone uh, that was thinking about suicide. It's, it's one of the, the, the most impactful events that will ever happen to you or to the other person. Uh, we've got some uh, stress management, anger management, interpersonal communications, and even some of our courses like uh, Mission Nutrition and Top Fuel all come back eventually to, to effective and good mental health. So I encourage, pe encourage people once our courses are up and running again to get on some of those. I'm going to share the link for the uh, health promotion Facebook page as well. So just to, you can sort of keep getting those reminders of your feeds of things that are happening, different initiatives that health promotion is doing. So I encourage you to click and follow them as well. You'll find that in the, in the Facebook links below. Um, just inspired by Kevin's, uh, Kevin's initiative to uh, spread the ideas about what have you been doing to take care of yourself or how can you take care of yourself? Let's do a quick round table. Um, either what you've been doing or what you would recommend for others. Claudia, I'm going to start with you because I usually leave you to last and somebody always takes your answer. So you're going to go first. <laughs> you are. And Kevin, you make me wish I dug out my Bell Let's Talk hat from a couple of years ago. So I never even thought about that. I'll remember for next year. Um, I think we all, you know, we all face our challenges in different ways. And I would just say to stay connected with your friends and family or extended support network if you're not near your family. I think we've heard that a little bit already this morning. And it's good to remember that mental health isn't just about being happy all the time. And the, the Bell Let's Talk theme of Keep Talking isn't just for today. It's ongoing every day. These are really good tools and resources to um, stay connected with 
um, for as long as you need them. Learn to recognize when your bucket is full, be kind to yourself and know that it's okay to ask for help. Sometimes putting a name to what you're feeling is important and that also helps you to process them. So keep talking. I think that's really, you know, staying connected and keep talking is, is uh, really important and really something that I am trying to prioritize myself um, this year as we continue to move forward with the uh, COVID. <laughs> Thanks, Claudia. Nancy? Well, already a Claudia took all the answers. Kevin has the hat. I quit. I, <laughs> so Claudia just for real, uh, all the things. So absolutely talking to people that, that is so healing for me. And I'm lucky enough that many of my closest friends are all clinicians. So I get both validation and free counseling every darn day. And I wholeheartedly go find a clinical friend. It's super useful. Um, I create opportunities for laughter and that can sound inauthentic, but even, even if you seek it out, you know, I, my home, I have several little people, I have kids, um, and just getting on the floor and playing and being present and, you know, kids certainly have a way of not worrying about, you know, the Ontario's opening up COVID plan. They're like, we're going to do Lego and it's going to be awesome. So I'm going to do Lego and I'm going to let that be awesome, right? So really slowing down and being present um, and connecting. And my other thing when I was, you know, thinking about, you know, what could I bring to this conversation today was language. So there's some brilliant quote that I'm just going to ruin right now, but it is to the effect of the limits of our world is the language we have. So if I can't tell you what is happening for me in my body and in my emotional experience, then you can't support me in that. Um, and so I certainly, I mean, this is my bread and butter. I talk about feelings all day long and I still always have so much to learn. So for anyone who is into reading or podcasts, Brene Brown is a social worker out of Texas and she released a book in December called Atlas of the Heart. And it's literally like an easy to read textbook of emotions. She talks like she's real. She's like, this is what I call the like, bad word tunnel or you know like when I was a server I would get overwhelmed and just tap out so it's really easy to read I like read it I'm a nerd but I read it for fun over my holidays um and now I take pictures of my favorite pages and tell clients about it I'm like did you know this feeling and this is what we can do for it because if we don't have the language what are we going to do so I'm just gonna I'm just stealing your answer Claudia and making it lengthier with <laughs> rambling if I can also just insert because everyone else did talk about like how to access services. Um, so folks who are military members. That's a great Padawawa, point, thank you Nancy. Um, so in Padawawa, intake is available, it's in person. Okay, so like th the phoning thing and the video thing people have experienced as a barrier. We hear you, we are here in person, Monday to Friday, 7.30 to three at the CDU. That's a same day walk-in service. There are like one and a half clinicians there every day, Monday to Friday. So please come and tell us what is happening. I think that there's lots of tension on base around like across Ontario, probably Canada, mental health resources are struggling. There's a really big demand. This is a hard time to human, but we are doing everything we possibly can and we cannot meet the need if you don't tell us what the need is. So we are there Monday to Friday. We are banking on Ontario's opening up we're allowed to start seeing a couple more people in group setting so we are planning our groups starting um kind of like mid-February we have a couple of groups that are going on if you're on the wait list and I know the wait list is hard you can use the community resources as you know the thing you do while you wait sometimes that's all you need but we also have people who are going to call you we're going to call and check on you and say how's it going I know it's hard to wait um, so I really think that we're offering quite a lot, like we are there, um, and the biggest barrier is shame, right? Like we get caught up in all of this hard stuff and we somehow become convinced that we're the only ones or there's something wrong with us, or we're supposed to be able to be fine with this stuff. Like it's weak. That is what keeps us quiet. And the antidote to shame is speaking our truth and connecting. So please reach out. 
If you are not a big reader and some people just don't enjoy it, Brene Brand also has a really good podcast. So if you're the kind of person who likes a podcast while you're running or on the treadmill, um, she also has a really good podcast that you could check out as well. Kevin. All right. Well, to kind of echo uh, Claudia, Nancy, and Chris, and maybe to kind of simplify things a little bit, just asking the question, very simple, simple question, how are you? And when you mean that and you ask someone that and, and they trust you, they're going to open up and they're going to let you know what's going on. And I think if we can have that kind of rapport with somebody where we can ask that question and they feel comfortable to share what's going on, that is the door to getting them the help that they need. Absolutely. It's that first step that's always sort of that tough one. So sometimes if you give someone the opportunity to make that step a little easier, um, you don't know what kind of impact that's going to have on their life. Chris. I'm going to put a plug in for two more uh, social uh, media folks that I follow. Uh, Dr. Robin Henley Defoe, she says we can do hard things and we totally can. And I know I can do the hard things because I get up in the morning and I follow Mel Robin's uh, idea of high-fiving myself in the mirror every morning to say, you can do this. I don't know what's gonna come my way, but I cheerlead for myself and say, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, um, I guess if I had one, it's really think about what you are focusing your attention on. I think it's really easy to find those easy um, turn your brain off the true crime podcasts or uh, doom scrolling on Facebook. Um, take a look at your devices. There's ways to set limits. So sometimes you sort of don't realize how much time you're spending in that vortex of negativity or people being angry. Um, take a look at how much time you're spending. Maybe set those limits and see if you can refocus on something else. Thank you all for joining us. There are so many really good ideas here for people. Um, reach out, have a conversation with somebody, uh, send a text, have a conversation, um, sit down and just uh, reach out for yourself or reach out for somebody else. But thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Bell Let's Talk Day the rest of the day. Lots of ways to, uh, as Kevin said, get that donation up with your frame, texting, calling, all of those things. Um, and thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye now.